So actually, I, I just uh, give some introduction about myself. My name is uh, Alex Wan, and actually I'm uh, sitting in Hong Kong office and uh, responsible for smart solution in Asia. Actually, myself is an electrical and control engineer, and my business sector covering the ICT, smart city, smart mobility, intelligent transport system, robotic uh, logistic issue, and covering the hospital, transportation, aviation, and many other intelligent systems. So. Hope that today is uh, I can share my view on how to make use of those uh, high-end technology to improve the productivity and also the system performance and operation uh, uh, to the different project. So uh, actually, the I pick up the three uh, uh, quite hot topics uh, to be shared. Actually, the smart solution not only for that, and I I pick the most. Uh, uh, the more uh, the popular solution for sharing today is uh, I will highlight why go smart. Smart will utilize those uh, advanced technology, of course, and also I will quote some example, uh, uh, three different example to show how to apply those uh, high-end technology and and how to improve the system performance uh, at the end. And of of course I will highlight some key, uh, key takeaway or lesson learned for you for you take it out. And of course, uh, you can have a Q&A section and uh, you can drop your question uh, during the presentation to the question box so that I can answer you later on. So first of all, is uh, why go smart? It's actually, this is uh, one of the, uh, the, the main theme about a smart city uh, because smart city cannot avoidable to make use of those uh, high-end technology like the ICT, like the AI or like the 5G mobile. The reason for the smart city is uh, not only for uh, purely the smart is get some reason behind. So actually uh, the people think of, about the smart is a lot of uh, complicated terms and terminology about a very unknown technology to be used. Actually, uh, the definition is not that way. It's uh, how to wisely use the different technology to improve the system performance, to enhance the productivity, to uh, increase the system response time and easy for the finding and uh, reduce the uh, human risks uh, during the no matter pandemic or or in any hazard area. So this is a theme of uh, smart, helping people doing the good things. And uh, of course, for the smart technologies, uh, we need to understand some technology trend or even the application trends. The people think of, uh, about using the, no matter the 5G or IoT or digital trains or even a robot, is uh, first of all, is uh, doing the situation awareness uh, plus manipulation. We can use a sensor or you, you using the control device into the different location or different condition to sense a thing to do the, the wise operation. And understand under the 5G, we can connect everything. and regardless of the cabling course and other other traditional uh, troublemaking uh, uh, headache, we can get rid of that. And also the communication nearly uh, bottleneck free. And also uh, during this uh, technology evolution or smart solution evolution, we create a lot of uh, data. Data is a valuable thing later on. Data mining will be another trend. Video almighty, not only for the civilians, we can use the video contact analyst analysis uh, do so many non-intrusive uh, 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 analysis and and uh, and the de detection and and uh, analytical work as well and of course uh, this is a, a wireless uh, world we can use the uh, uh, 5g or wireless technology to do everything uh, what's the benefit of this uh, new technology trend is uh, as i highlight in the benefit is uh, in enhanced uh, productivity we can enable the fully automation uh, environment. Now, of course, uh, we can do the instant fault finding, not the faster fault finding. We can do the instant incident uh, 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 response to the uh, abnormal situation to fix up the problem immediately without too many uh, manual operation. Actually, we can achieve the better productivity in opposite, the cheaper infrastructure as well, less cabling costs, less construction costs as well. <coughs> Of course, uh, we can enable the unmanned operation era free process during the pandemic. We don't need to rely on too many manual operation while we still can remain the operation uh, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We can avoid any uh, uh, obsolescence uh, uh, equipment because uh, we can allow a more uh, open environment and a platform as well. 
data access anywhere. We can access the data no matter the location, no matter the situation. We can get the data doing the related relevant uh, analysis right as well. Thanks for the 5G and some other good uh, wireless technology. We can cut the cable cost, cut the time of installation and, uh, and the situation. Of course, I remember some core technology to be used. Uh, no matter the, the three uh, major solution I will introduce today is uh, some, even other smart solution will apply the similar. It's uh, like uh, big data, AI machine learning, internet of things, cloud computing, and right now the very hot topic the cryptos we are using the cyber security and the blockchain like the blockchain we can do the do the data validity anywhere so that avoid any false data indication or false data usage so this kind of uh, core technology would, would be a widely used and this is everybody when we touch on the smart solution cannot be avoid first here we go everybody uh, uh so many hot topic uh, talk about the 5g 5g is a no longer a mobile system only. It will create an ecosystem for everything under under the 5G can allow many pioneer usage or application function as well. So it already created um, much more than mobile networks uh, application. For example, the the project we we end underground in Hong Kong is uh, we are there is a cluster hospital in Hong Kong. It's a major hospital, the new hospital. It is a talking about to accommodate uh, 2,400 beds, 37 different kinds of uh, technology advanced operating theater, and uh, got so many systems uh, to be integrated and to be interoperable. But however, it creates a lot of trouble to the user. They don't know how to interact and how to manipulate or operate such a huge uh, uh, amount of uh, system. Uh, because I uh, talk about the uh, integration will involve a lot of uh, complexity. So they come to us. So we provide a solution about using the 5G based IoT. First of all, we gave them the very uh, pioneer telecommunication platform. You can see that there is a more than, actually it's a more than 40 system covering from building system to the hospital uh, 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 treatment, medical treatment, biomedical operation system, and even some the uh, uh, logistic operation and the autonomous automation and robotic system all in one. We are using the IoT uh, to interconnect uh, those uh, different systems for easy for finding and to monitor the system performance and also manipulate some energy saving. And we can gather all those uh, data for uh, overall performance uh, 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 review and also using the Later on, we can even add in those uh, machine learning uh, algorithm to to uh, uh, give them more precise uh, uh, operation with uh, energy saving and optimize optimize the the, the process flow uh, of uh, production. So you can see the different kind of a uh, new thing will be on the platform as well, like the remote surgery system, the AGV, the uh, robot uh, for transportation, and and some of the uh, even the pharmacy automation system can be out on this platform. So this is a very pioneer things. And um, later on, apart from the Internet of Things, it can connect everything together. Actually, we can add on some of the pioneer concept called the digital twin. Remember, digital twin is not only the BIM or GIS or 3D modeling. Our definition of a digital twin but IoT is that you can see that we can combine the process engineering the lower level uh, and also the the balance of plan thing all together, the building services, BMS, and also the process engineering all together. We can use the communication platform like the IoT network, like the MBIoT, 5G, connect everything to combine the conventional the scatter system with the BMS and even some automation system all together. Not only on this, we can use uh, the uh, AI system uh, to to do the further analysis work and gather all those historical data for, for uh, monitor the performance analysis, what's the best make, uh, about decision making. We can allow this thing for the further enhancement about the production and also the decision making and instant, instant response as well. So of course, uh, there are so many terms about the AI I can introduce in the coming slide. When you integrate or interface or so many things together, remember to do the wise interface management because uh, so many systems integrated together, we need to encounter the different challenging things like the 
I/O function, like the different data uh, handshaking issue and interoperability between those systems. Identify what's the monitoring function only, what's the operation, what's the data format, and what's the ultimate uh, machine learning, what's the major target for machine learning to analysis. This kind of thing we need to identify first. Otherwise, you integrate everything, just uh, make the system so complicated without any real function. And also, this is one of the uh, AI example. We take time. For the AI, is uh, the day one, you cannot do the AI. Day one, you can use a domain knowledge to have some expert system in place for basic function first. Once you get uh, the sufficient long, the historical data, you can uh, turn it to the data-driven AI model. This is a mathematic modeling. Then you can do the more even wise uh, uh, analysis where against the uh, data performance and system performance as well. So. One of the cases, uh, if Lewis, uh, uh, the switch uh, treatment uh, plant in, in somewhere Hong Kong, actually this is an old, old processing plant and uh, it can uh, handle the 93,000 meter grip uh, uh, flow rate uh, per data for the production capacity. The client is, uh, they have uh, some innovation work on, on, the, on another phase. They would like to have uh, more advancement on the application. They want to monitor about the processing uh, system. They, they have a uh, difficulty to increase further, uh, increase uh, their productivity in this regard. So they also, the government, uh, they come to us, the DSD department, they, they come to us. So we, we just uh, put it as, uh, as I said, uh, they are not only uh, want to have the whole processing part in 3D modeling, easy for understand about the performance, to have a graphic view about the system uh, operation. They also want to have some enhancement about the, the processing engineering. So we, we gave them the uh, solution is not only uh, stick on the process engineering, because of the whole plant operation, we also have another element called the balance of plant. Uh, some other environmental issue. So we put on the new sensor and new system uh, for control, the blue one in the bottom level. And then we're using the IoT, the, the, uh, some wireless solution to connect all those sensors together. Of course, put it on the digital twin platform for analysis work. And then we create this platform for add on those uh, AI function later on so that uh, they can keep on monitoring the historical data and they can do the wise uh, analysis work and give the good uh, decision making uh, suggestion for the operator to perform. So this is uh, not only to gather all data together, it is uh, talking about interoperability uh, between the system. We want to, what was the purpose of that is uh, we want to make it as a one plus one bigger than two uh, effect. But of course the challenge is uh, we cannot do it. Uh, we must uh, do the things is uh, step by step. and. Uh, the purpose of that is uh, cost saving, energy saving, improve the reliability, enhance the decision making and make the decision more wisely, more precisely. This is the purpose of that. But you need to have a development roadmap. You cannot do it at the one step. So you can have a step by step to growing, particularly when, when we are talking about putting the AI, putting the machine learning, it takes some time for analysis work. But however, some other area, they already got a, such a good example of uh, using the digital train and IoT with analysis uh, capability. So you can see some uh, challenging, but promising the result, no matter in the cut the failure rate, enhance the uh, cost uh, effectiveness, and also the improve the energy efficiency. You can see the result from, from the right hand side. So the last one is uh, talking about the robotic application. So uh, robotic doesn't mean the only the AMR. AMR mainly the logistic robot, just uh, helping to moving uh, the goods uh, for the traveling. So j I just uh, take it as an example, no matter this is a logistic robot or even the production robot uh, facing the similar thing. For, for example, when we are doing the robotic design, the AMR, we, we need to concern about the site constraint. So we look forward for the uh, uh, the straight path, avoid those uh, sharp turning angles. Otherwise, it will affect the traffic throughput for, for this uh, robot. And also, we need to concern about the interface with other systems, like the lip interface or door interface. Otherwise, uh, try to avoid something. They will block the movement about the robots. 
And also we need to concern about the safety because uh, robotic means a certain extent is unmanned operation, autonomous. This is a, a very useful and powerful things in the, even the hospital environment. But of course, uh, we need to avoid to crush the people or, or because uh, during the autonomous operation, for example, in some process plan, you, you will switch off the lighting for energy saving. If somebody suddenly go into the, the, the plant, it will be hit by the or crushed by the robot. This is a very danger. So we need to concern about this safety issue. Of course, the uh, robot itself will have uh, navigation and pathfinding. There's a lot of uh, different technology, depends on the site, depends on the technology usage. So this is something we need to concern and uh, we, we need to take care of. But however, uh, for example, in one of the uh, very challenging project, perhaps it is the uh, first thing in the world, is um, there's a called a, uh, a hospital uh, supporting surface center in Hong Kong, maybe the whole world. Uh, what's the purpose, purpose of this uh, project is uh, it is in the combination of a laundry surface, central kitchen and catering and central storage and data center all in one. But uh, using the lesser space, lesser energy, lesser menu operation, but still create a lot of uh, big production. Combine everything together and also with the help of a big data and machine learning. Of course, uh, AML is uh, one of the key elements, but it's not the only one because uh, we also have uh, other robotic uh, system inside of that, like a robot arm storage system and amended operation. Amended operation, not only the physical thing, uh, even include some machine learning and uh, and software robotic system as well. You can see we can cut the manual operation to only 5% and ultimately we want to enhance the productivity by eight to 10 times, uh, save a lot of uh, recurrent costs and even the capital investment can be reduced because we largely use on the 5G wireless. And of course uh, we can do the uh, very optimize the space. Uh, Hong Kong, the space is uh, one of the very luxury thing. We try to wisely make use of the space for bigger production. So you can see how challenging and how uh, greatly we want about this kind of uh, operation. So today time is short, but I would like to highlight some key issue. For example, in in some common issue, the, the free technology I just in introduced, uh, we will have a common factor of uh, using the 5G backbone. And also uh, when it comes to developing the smart solution, we need to concern about digital framework. In the long old day, we concern about the ENM or even the building structure, civil structure framework, or even the authority frame, uh, submission framework. Digital is uh, one of the bigger thing we need to get through. But of course, uh, don't be greedy to take everything in one step because uh, we need some time in the roadmap to develop uh, step by step uh, because of course time issue we don't uh, need to do everything in one step we can uh, make it in the different stages for the robotic as i said the building layout is one of the key challenge and because it will affect the traffic throughput and instant response time don't forget about the safety and interface with other system and the iot is uh, because you will gather a lot of uh, uh, the data you will have a strategy behind and uh, why why you want to gather such a big data why you connect everything together you may you may think about the usage and the strategy how to use it connectivity is one of the challenge we need to have uh, interface management for the digital twins uh, as i said uh, don't misunderstand it is a beam or a gis uh, it is more than that uh, you, you can add on everything and uh, in the combination of iot can create another surface platform and of course, uh, digital training is that you can add on the domain knowledge and AI algorithm for further mathematical uh, application. So you must uh, make the platform itself openly scalable and uh, modular for any new function uh, we are encounter. So today time is uh, quite short. Is I hope that I can give some initial understand or way of thinking for your uh, uh, feeling about the new world to be coming. So, uh, you can ask any question you like. Thank you, Alex, for your presentation. So before moving into the Q&A period, I would like to remind attendees to enter your questions in the question box on the GoToWebinar platform. And also you can download a PDF version of the presentation from the handout box on the dashboard. I will start with the first question. How do you view the value of using 5G ecosystem? Okay, thank you. This is a very challenging question. It's, uh, the people talk about the 5G, you always think about this is a high speed, higher than the 4G LTE, right? But actually 
high speed is uh, only a one of a uh, relatively minimal uh, benefit. Actually, they got another function. It's called the all things connected capability. Compared to 4G, 4G can per node, it can only connect 500. But for the 5G minimum, it can be a half million to two million per node. So you can see everything can be connected on the platform. And also it can create another powerful thing is a lower latency or lower delay because that connects uh, the things that you can do in the instant response. So it is very good for autonomous application, no matter the connected autonomous vehicle, robotics and other time critical application, you can run on this platform to do whatever you want. And also the final, of course, is a wireless and fully mobility and no no, no concern about the cabling costs and other uh, traditional investment. They can cut the cabling, then construction costs, easy to install all kinds of a sensor. So right now, it's, uh, the only difficulty is uh, how you can imagine the sufficient application to make use of the 5G's capability to 100%. Right now, the application can only using 3 to 5% only. So this is a... Uh, great uh, uh, potential about the high-end application or innovative solution. Thank okay. you. Next question, what is the value of using IoT, digital twin and robotics to encounter pandemic crisis? Okay, thank you. So this is a really a challenging thing. It's, uh, because uh, I think everybody, I don't need to explain too much in the pandemic in the last year, what we suffer, no matter in, in Asia, uh, European or American, it's, uh, it will stop all the operations, stop all the function. So of course, uh, using the uh, uh, IoT, digital chain and robotic, remember some terminology. First is amend the operation. Another is a full situation awareness capability. So what's the purpose of that is that it can remain the non-stop and heavy duty operation and the production. Uh, and and uh, regardless of any uh, uh, pandemic situation, it can stop the people going back for work or, or menu for working. Of course, the people worry about the, it, it can uh, uh, make the people lose a job and other things. But however, the pandemic telling the people is that sometimes if you can keep on the production, the production line, it can save the people's life. No matter the face masks and other production uh, products, you can still have things, those uh, unmanned operation to keep on producing things to help people. So this kind of thing can help all this happen. And uh, also uh, the benefit is that they can cut the cost and cut the human risk of uh, infection risk, no matter under the pandemic or other hazardous uh, uh, condition. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, next question, why is it so difficult to link uh, IT and data analytics to digital twins? Okay, this is uh, everybody asking the question. Is uh, Actually, the first difficulty, actually I highlight a little bit in my presentation is uh, you are facing the first challenge is uh, to how to determine the type of uh, data to be collected for the IoT for performing the situation awareness. This is a quite hard thing. Uh, some people focus on the processing engineering. Some people only understand about the balance of run. So we need the, we need the process engineer and uh, and the uh, uh, balance of plant engineer join hand together to determine what's the better added or or what's the extra data to be collected through the through this uh, platform. Second uh, challenge is uh, data compatibility, system and data compatibility. When you get all different kind of a system information together, you must understand the data dictionary or data characteristic. Otherwise, uh, you, you just uh, get a, 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 a group of uh, garbage, uh, don't know how to use it. So you must uh, define the data dictionary first. And the sec uh, and the subsequently is a framework development about the digital trains. Whether you are using the BIM or GIS as a 3D uh, structure, and whether you will put on those uh, high-end uh, AI machine learning as an extra module for, for further enhancement. And the last one is uh, if you can involve some data, uh, uh, IoT data for analysis by the machine learning, we need to determine whether the data will be stored in the cloud storage or put it in the local data farm, the server farm. And of course, uh, as I said, uh, if you want to go for some machine learning, then whether you will go for the domain knowledge uh, at the initial stage 
and step by step moving to the data driven AI machine learning later on. So this kind of a challenging is uh, we need to have a suitable expert to help you to get through this kind of a complicated thing involving the ICT engineer, data scientists or system analysis and process and and, and, and process engineer and balance or plan engineer for John Apple. So don't think about uh, just uh, hiring one or two engineer can help the thing because it is a new thing. So I need the knowledge crunching or, or good works to, to make it uh, uh, happening. But don't worry, right now is so many solution provider in the world and uh, they are created rapidly to help people to understand the whole stuff and how, how we uh, to do the system design. For example, WSB already <laughs> migrated ourselves to, to doing this kind of a design already. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next question. What are the limitations of 5G in a building? Uh, good question. Is uh, The 5G in a building is uh, first uh, we need to concern about the blind spot. So uh, either you can ask the surface provider to install the in in building inside the building the infrastructure for antenna and all those uh, 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 fiber optic wiring uh, inside the building so don't rely on the outdoor 5g to cover the inside things so and some other country they are even concerned about uh, launching the industrial grade 5g system just uh, not not count by the data rate because uh, usually the people think about a 5g is uh, like a you need to buy a data pen from a surface provider. This is a traditional way of application. But later on, because of 5G provide the industrial benefit, so the people will have a self-owned in-house 5G system, put it inside the building. Even the campus, like a uh, airport, they can have an uh, airport uh, island-wide or, or campus-wide 5G system, en enabling those uh, industrial application. Don't count on the surface provider for, for providing this kind of thing. It, it will be totally different from the 4G or 3G's uh, the manipulation, uh, the the deployment scheme. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, in your <laughs> opinion, which cities are at the forefront of being smart cities? Uh, interesting is uh, those uh, developing country, not even the developed country. Why I I think this is uh, they can have a. Uh, chance to because uh, they didn't in, uh, invest too much on the high-end things uh, before but so right now they can wait and see the new technology uh, to be created so they can have a chance to wait until the new technology to be implemented like uh, even the china even the uh, uh, i don't want to say that singapore is well singapore is another issue is that they are promoting this kind of a new thing Another is uh, Japan, Korea, and even the Northern European. They are quite uh, smart on using this kind of uh, smart solution. But however, we, we need to concern about the smart. Sometimes doesn't mean technology advanced only. Uh, sometimes it's a talk about the living style. For example, in the Northern European, it's, uh, uh, they, want, they want to be more environmental friendly, sustainable, The people can enjoy the life, uh, the environmental, the green synergy, everything. And some uh, fully developed country like Hong Kong, Singapore, we are looking for fast and the accurate and the productivity enhancement. Different country have a different issue. We need to have a, a, a balance of, about the, the user requirement. and. Uh, doing the workshop training, doing the, the client uh, interactive uh, workshop to understand the requirement and then put on the no matter the uh, technology or even the uh, master plan about the strategy, how to balance the green product production and living style, cost, time, everything uh, 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 concerned into the whole consideration. Then we can make it uh, more wise about the smart solution planning. Thank you. We have additional questions. However, due to the time, we will take the last question, if it's OK. Uh, last question is, how much physical site work do you think can be replaced by robotics? Uh, well, actually, initially, it can be a 90%, as I said in my one of my projects. 90% or above can be replaced by the robotics. And uh, with uh, help by the uh, artificial intelligence machine learning and uh, with a transition historical data, that could cover all the operation scenario. I guess uh, more than 99% of uh, 
unmanned operation can be achieved. And of course, uh, some routine high risk and danger, uh, low skill laboring work can be uh, replaced by the robotics. So the people can have uh, more energy and the resources on those uh, project management customer service and also the creativity or innovative enhancement or, or dream works <laughs> later on. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So okay. Thank you, Alex, for a fantastic presentation. Uh, we're at the end of our webinar session. Uh, please feel free to follow up directly with Alex via the contact details shown on the screen. And I would like to thank all attendees for joining today. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you, Alex, for presenting. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for Thank your time. Everyone.